Hi, in this video, we're going to look at using images within our preset browsers, custom look and feel. We're going to focus specifically on the expansion column in the preset browser. And for this, you're going to need to know a little bit of stuff about expansions that I don't think is in the documentation and you might not know about. So stick around. There's going to be some uh, useful little nuggets in this one. Let's add a preset browser to our UI. So we'll add the new floating tile. From the content type, we'll select preset browser. Let's just have a bit more room here. And in the data property here, we're going to change this one where it says show expansion as column set to false. We're going to change that to true and we'll hit F5 on that. Okay, and immediately you can see two expansions have popped up. So those are in my project directory. So we can see them here, it's two expansions. And I'll show you those in the actual project folder. So this is the project folder. If we go to the expansions folder, I've got two expansions here. And these are encrypted expansions. So the Emerald Flute one, this is just an HXI file. And the Sophia Woodwinds one, this is actually a file based expansion, but I've already encoded it to an HXI. So this is also encrypted. Uh, if you don't know about expansions, I've made a video about it. It's a slightly out of date video now, but I'll leave a link in the video description or you can click the eye icon in the top right of this video to check out the expansions video. But basically in your project directory down here at the bottom, you've got this uh, little expansion editing toolbar. And once you've created an expansion, you can click this button here to encode it. And that's what generates the HXI. And if you have the HXI present in your expansions folder, then Hives will ignore all the file based stuff and just get the expansion data from the HXI. And then if you want to revert to the file based stuff, you just delete the HXI and Hives will read from the files. And finally, when you send it to your user, all you're sending them is the HXI. So the first thing to know about expansions, which I don't think was covered in my previous video because I don't think it existed then, is we're going to use the expansion handler object. So to do that, we need to create an expansion handler. So that's const exp handler. You can call it what you like. You can call it eh or something. I just call mine exp handler equals engine dot create expansion handler. Okay, so now we've got an expansion handler that gives us access to a load of extra functions. Let me show you what those are. So we have access now to all of these expansion handler functions. So things like get expansion, get current expansion, get expansion list, which will give you a list of all the expansions, all these kind of things. So really useful. Um, and we're going to use the get expansion list right now. So we're going to loop over the expansions. And I just want to show you something about expansions that's um, quite important when we're doing this kind of thing. So if we look at the Sophia Woodwinds folder, um, in here we have an images folder and there's a whole bunch of images in here, okay? But remember that highs at the moment isn't reading from these folders anyway, it's reading from this HXI file. When I encoded this expansion, I only included the icon.png image. Those other images we saw weren't there. So in the HXI for this expansion, Sophia Woodwinds, there is only an icon.png image. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a loop for E in exp handler.get expansion list. So all this is doing is it's getting a list of all the expansions with this function and it's going through them one at a time and putting them into this variable called e so we can have a look at each one so if we console.print e.getproperties.name for example and i hit f5 it's just going to print out the names of the expansions right one after another and that get properties function came from the expansion class so if i type expansion in there these are all the functions we have for each individual expansion. So the ones we were looking at before was for the expansion handler. These are for the individual expansions. So we use the get properties one, this one here, and I just happen to know it had it returned a property called name. So that's how we can display the name. But what we're actually going to use is this one here, get image list. And this will return, in fact, let's have a look, returns a list of all available images in the expansion. So what we're going to do is we're going to print out the name as we've done. Then we're also going to print out that list console.print and we're going to trace the list so we can see the list e.getImageList and I'll hit F5. Now can you see this? Let's, let's make this a bit bigger. So there's the name Emerald Flute being printed out. 
and it's saying this is the image list that we printed and it's saying there's one image called icon.png then this Sophia Wood wins and it's saying there is one image called icon.png so with that knowledge we're now going to modify this to show an image for these expansions so let's just close that up we're going to need a look and feel object so we'll call it const we'll just call it laugh and it's going to be a local look and feel so that'll be equal to content dot create local look and feel okay and we'll also need a reference to our preset browser so let's just rename that floating tile to flt preset browser we'll right click in the component list create script variable definition we'll paste that here And we're going to assign our look and feel object to our preset browser. So FLT preset browser set local look and feel laugh. Okay. And if I hit F5, nothing interesting will happen yet. So before we can display images in our preset browser, we need to load those images into our look and feel object, into our laugh object. This is similar to what I did in a previous video where I showed how to use images in look and feel. But in this case, we need to load in multiple images because we want to load in all of the icons for our expansions. So to do this, we'll actually declare a function, an inline function. We'll call it load images, uh, load expansion images into look and feel. And we're actually going to pass in the look and feel object here. So we'll just call it obj. And we need access to the expansion handler. Now we have a global expansion handler we've declared up here. Global as in it's available throughout this entire script. But we'll put this, uh, we'll make this a local variable within our function so that this function is sort of self-contained. So a local expansion handler. Then we're going to do what we did before. We're going to loop through the list of expansions. So e in exp handler get expansion list. So we're going through each expansion. And now we want to extract that image path for our icon.png image. So we're going to have a local variable called image, which is going to be equal to e dot, I think it's get wildcard reference. Let's just check in here. Um, yes, get wild or get wildcard reference. So this will give us a string that includes the uh, wildcard that Heise recognizes as being part of the expansion. So if we just scroll up here, um, can we see, here's the path to the image. So you can see it's got this wildcard here. It doesn't show up very well because the uh, font color isn't very good inside this uh, console. But can you see it says exp colon colon Sophia Woodwinds um, icon.png. And there's these uh, curly braces on each end as well. So that's the wildcard, that exp Sophia Woodwinds. So that tells highs that this is an expansion and the expansion is called Sophia Woodwinds. So it knows where to look for the image basically. And we could write this out manually. We could actually just write this exp colon colon Sophia Woodwinds, etc. Um, but it's nicer to use this wildcard reference. And it will also replace the reference for each expansion. So it will first of all be exp emerald flute, then it'll be exp Sophia Woodwinds, and then whatever other expansions you have. So it just means you don't have to write it out manually get wildcard reference and we want the reference to icon.png okay and then we'll just do a little test just to make sure that the image is defined so we'll say if is defined and then we'll do our next action in here because if image for some reason isn't defined maybe it doesn't have an icon.png on on a particular uh, expansion then we don't want it to do any further processing we only wanted to do it if it's defined. So we're going to check in here to make sure the image is defined and then we'll do the next stage. And this is also a good opportunity um, to include maybe a placeholder image for expansions that don't have an icon. You could instead load a placeholder image. So you'd do else and then here you'd put the action to load in a placeholder image. Okay, so now we're going to load the image into our laugh object and we're passing in laugh as this obj object. So it'll be obj.load image and then the image is our variable image and then we have to give it a pretty name uh, which is like the id that we're going to use to refer to the image and for the pretty name we'll just actually use the name of the expansion so we can do e.getProperties 
dot name. So just the same as I did before when I was outputting the name. And then we need to call this function so that it loads all of these images into the laugh object. So we'll call it up here, replace obj with laugh. So it's loading it into this laugh object. And I'll hit F5 and hope that we don't get any errors. Yep, so that all worked just fine. Okay, now it's time to write our laugh function to draw these images. So we're going to write laugh.register function. And it's, uh, I think it's draw preset. Uh, let me think, I'm trying to think what the function is. Draw preset browser list item, I think is the name of the function. Um, oh, I'll pass them all. So I'll draw preset browser list item. That's the one. Okay, so let's just have a look at what this function gives us. We'll do console.print trace obj. And we'll just clear this out. And we'll hit F5. So first of all, we can see that we now no longer have any list items. That's because Highs is expecting us to draw them. So this is the information we get. We get the area of the list item, the X, Y width and height. And it's going to keep jumping down as it refreshes the preset browser. Uh, so we just have to, in fact, what we'll do, let's comment that console printout now. There we go. So it gives us the area, the X, Y width and height. It gives us the column index. So the first column which we're using, which is the expansions column, has an index of minus one. The following columns are zero, one, and two. The row index is the row um, that the item is, starting from zero. The text is the text, so Sophia would win to this one. If it's selected, false. If we're hovering the mouse over, false. Um, and then some color properties. Okay, so those are the properties that we have access to in this look and feel function. So we are going to draw an image. So we are going to get the area into an object called A. And it's just a bit easier to deal with A rather than having to write object.area every time. And then we're going to do g.drawImage. And the image name, if you remember, we're using the name of the expansion as our pretty name, as our ID, which is really useful because it just so happens that the text that we got, the object text, is the same thing, right? It's the expansion name. So we can just put obj.text here for our image name. For the area, we'll put a. For the offset, we'll put zero. For the y offset, also zero. And I'll hit F5, and you can see it's drawing the images there. Let's zoom in on that. So these are what the images look like. But the images are actually square images in my case. So you can see that's what it should look like for the Sophia Woodwinds one. And for the Emerald Flute one, um, oh, the Emerald Foot one's embedded in the HXI, so we can't see that there. So they're square images, but the area that we're given to draw in is a rectangle, okay? And it's like a little skinny one. So we need to adjust that. And we have a property in the preset browser's um, data object, which we can use to change that. So if we come down to this one, column row padding. So this gives us some padding on the y-axis for each column. So this... Um, would be the expansion column, this is the bank column, this is the category column, and this is the preset column. So we're interested in the expansion column. So let's change this zero to 100 and hit F5. And there we go, that, that was actually a pretty good one. So you can play around with this, I just got lucky. If I put like 50, it's probably, yeah, it's too small. Just play around with this for whatever suits your images. And obviously if you're not using square images, you'll use a, a different um, padding value. And uh, let's just unselect that. So now, yeah, we can scroll up and down. So now we've got this um, showing really nicely. Let's just add one other little feature so that when you hover the mouse over, it highlights which one the mouse is over. So I showed in previous videos how to set the opacity of images in look and feel. And we do that using the g.setColor function and then applying a color with an alpha amount. So we'll do g.setColor, colors.with alpha. And the color we choose doesn't matter, so we're going to just use colors.white. And this function is going to get a little long, so let's just give ourselves a bit more room here. So for the alpha amount, we're actually going to put an if statement here. And it's going to be an inline if statement using the ternary operator. I've covered that in some other videos as well, I think. And we want to know if the mouse is hovering, so that we're going to use this hover value here. So we're going to say obj.hover, question mark. So we're saying, is it hovering? And if it is, we want the opacity to be 1. We'll put a colon. That's the same as doing an else in a regular if-else statement. 
So if it isn't hover, what do we want the opacity to be? Let's say 0.5. Okay, and we'll hit F5 on that. So now we can see when we hover the mouse over, they sort of light up, just shows which one we've got the mouse over. So if I click on Emerald Flute, which has some presets, yeah, we're getting an error. Image default not found, and it's showing this XXX thing there. Okay, the reason for that is in our function here, we haven't checked which column we're drawing in. So this is trying to draw the image for all of the columns, and that's not going to work. So we just need to do a little check here to see that we're in the expansion column. So we just say if obj.columnindex equals equals minus one. And then we put this inside there. So this way it's only going to apply to the first column, to the expansion column. So now when I click on Emerald Flute, it's just not going to show anything in these columns. Okay, I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below or put them on Patreon or send me a message or contact me somehow. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, click subscribe and like, and please share it with anybody who you think might find it interesting. I'll be posting this snippet to Patreon for my higher tier supporters, so if you'd like access to this snippet as I've written it here and you'd just like to drop it into your project, go on Patreon and you'll be able to grab it from there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.